December 6th. Everybody gathered for the opening of the sawmill. Miss Turner made the bread this time. Bando and Zella brought cheese, and Mrs. Strawberry made cord pudding. Alice had brewed some tea with wild peppermint leaves, and I contributed two nice bass. They grow fast in ponds. At high noon, I held a log in front of the saw. Alice opened the sluice gate and ran back to join us faster than the water flowed. We cheered as it rushed forward, hit the blades, turned the wheel and shaft, which turned the first cog, which turned the second cog, which sent the saw up and down. We made so much noise cheering that Frightful baited, and I had to rescue her to keep her from breaking her pinions. Hearing the noise, the crows came in to see if we were harassing an owl. I stopped reading my journal and looked up. The water mill was a big change. I sawed wood and made a gable for the mill house roof and shingles to cover it. I had leaped from the Stone Age into the beginning of the Industrial Revolution without any pain, in fact, with a lot of joy. A few days after the mill was running, Alice poked her head in the door of my tree while I was writing. You're not going to have acorn pancakes, Sam Gribbley, she said, unless you make a waterfall for my plumping mill. I had forgotten all about her mill in the excitement of building the dam and sawmill. The cascade that ran her mill was now underwater. So that very day, I made a staircase of stones under the pond overflow. The water splashed down, filled her wooden box, and lifted the stone, and she was back in business again. The falls are attractive and the sound nice in the evening. I can understand why Alice likes waterfalls. I go back to my journal. Christmas Eve. I added another cog wheel with a bent iron. To the iron, I attached a bellows. I cut boards from Bando's barn siding into two heart shapes. A wide strip of deer skin pegged each, allowing them to move up and down. A cow horn made a perfect nozzle through which the air rushed when the bellows was pumped. I laid the bellows on the low table made of stones and directed the stream of air into the charcoal in a stone fire bin. When the wheel turned, the third cog wheel pushed and the bellows pushed the bellows up and down and I had a ford. Now I can bend and shape pieces of iron I find around the ruins of the Gribbly house and barn. Eventually, I'll forge them into shovels, ladles, and even nails. Christmas Day. This is the day of our annual Christmas party. Bando, Zella, and Miss Turner were going to join us for a wild turkey, frightful caught, but a big snowstorm struck last night and no one got up the mountain. In the morning, Alice fed the wild birds and I dug down to Baron Weasel's den to see what he was up to. As I was tunneling into him, he was tunneling out to me. He burst out of the snow and slid down the hill on his belly. One fellow don't have to worry, one fellow I don't have to worry about in a snowstorm is the Baron Weasel. Later, he arrived at my tree for Christmas dinner. I gave him the liver and giblets from the turkey. December 26th. The pond is a white muffin. The mill house has disappeared under a snowdrift, and Alice and I are playing checkers with ground nuts and dried apples. Winter is here. The next chapter, which I'll read tomorrow, is titled, In Which I Am In For a Surprise. And if you're reading along at home, that's on page 53 and on the far side of the mountain. I want to just show you an illustration from what we just read about the sawmill and the forge work. See you tomorrow.